Hello everybody and welcome. This is Adrian. Thank you so much for joining me today. And I have some thoughts on Cossacks 3, the new game that was released just last week on Tuesday. It is now Saturday, so I suppose this review is coming a little late, but that's okay. So I just wanted to give my impressions and review of the game from what I have played. Um, GSC Game World did give me a review copy and I played like four hours of the game, three hours. Not too much, you know. Um, I haven't had that much time to play the game, but... I think I've got, you know, a decent grasp on it and what it's, what it's like. So I just kind of wanted to talk uh, about the game. The bottom line, basically for me, um, is it's actually a pretty cool game. Um, it's kind of like a harken to Age of Empires 2. And I would say that it's not so much a sequel to the Cossacks franchise. It more is uh, a reboot of the original Cossacks 1 game that released, I think, in 2001, if I'm correct. Uh, it was called Cossacks uh, European Wars. So it's a pretty cool game. Um, I have some notes here and I just kind of wanted to talk a little bit about what I enjoy about the game and maybe what doesn't uh, work so well. So um, some of the basics, it looks good, I guess you would say. I mean, it doesn't look amazing. It's not by any standards groundbreaking. Um, it's an appreciable, you know, graphical engine and, and it looks nice. It definitely looks, you know, like Age of Empires 2. Um, not so much like Age of Empires 3. Age of Empires 3 was actually full HD. And, uh, you know, it's obviously better than the original Cossacks, which ran off of the, um, I think, an updated Age of Empires 2 engine. So it looks nice, but, you know, like I said, it's nothing groundbreaking for 2016. Um, and it is very basic as far as an RTS game. It's it's definitely real-time strategy. You, you, you know, you build up your resources, you manage your resources, you manage your armies, you go out and you fight. You know, you take keys, uh, key resources, strategic positions, you know, if you have... Um, like a small lake, you want to take that lake with some ships and you want to be able to transport your troops around. And it's, it's a proven good RTS formula. You know, you actually don't see that many new RTS games that feel good, that run good, that aren't trying something different. Um, you know, this Cossacks 2, or I mean, uh, Cossacks 3, it really is not trying anything that different. It's actually just sticking to a good proven formula. It works, you know, and, uh, I appreciate the game for that. Because it is, it is enjoyable. It's just a good, you know, it's, it, you just load up the game and you just start playing and, you know, you have a good time on like a lazy Sunday or something and it's fun. It's fun. You enjoy it. Let's see. Um, the UI, the user interface looks pretty nice. It's very simple, very clean, kind of minimalistic. It does look good. Um, the fact that you can have hundreds of soldiers on screen is awesome. It's actually really cool to kind of build up your large militaries, um, you know, have a large population cap. And uh, that's, that's pretty enjoyable, I, especially in a multiplayer game. I would imagine that once things really get drawn out, it turns less in from a kind of tactical sort of perspective when playing the game to a more strategic perspective because you'll have so many damn units on screen. So many formations, artillery, you know, cavalry, infantry in these formations with officers and drummers. And um, definitely over a long-winded game, probably an hour, hour and a half is, is how long I would expect some pretty in-depth games to go. And that may be just free for, you know, two people, three people, four people. Um... I find that large populations, it's its pretty interesting. It keeps things fresh, you know, large battles. There's no real um, limit to how many troops you can build besides, you know, what your economy can support. Um, I will admit the, uh, the, the economy system is also pretty interesting. The fact that you need, you know, coal and iron and food, uh, wood and stone. Um, it's, it's nice, you know, it adds, um, it lends itself to a good RTS formula and the economy system, you know, how you manage your economy, how you manage your troops. It is also pretty, pretty cool. I find that it works well. You know, the economy system plus the RTS formula uh, comes together to create a, a pretty cool game. Um, the sound design is great. The music is awesome. I think that the gun noises, the cannons, everything sounds very crisp, very real, uh, very, very enjoyable. Honestly, when you see these huge battles and, and you, just, you have, a, you know, lines of musket men firing, it's, it's pretty enjoyable. It's pretty awesome. Um, the gameplay, you know, the battles... It's all very enjoyable. It's uh, it's very fresh to me. I, I think that it's relatively fresh compared to some of the things that we've seen. And uh, I, I enjoy it. And um, I would say also there's a good diversity of countries. Each country, you know, the graphical fidelity of each country is, is different. You know, if you have someone from Algeria, they're going to look different than from someone from France. Um, as far as units, I don't think the countries are that different. You know, if you play a Western European country, you have, you know, heavier cavalry, um, usually better armored infantry, more expensive infantry um, than, say, someone from Turkey or someone from Algeria. 
you know, if you play the Venetians, you you look different, you play differently than, um, you know, a country like England, for example. Uh, but I don't think there's a huge difference between the countries, although it is nice to be able to play different countries in general. Um, and the single player campaigns are, are quite extensive. There's five different campaigns and it really feels good to actually kind of play through a good single player RTS campaign. You know, there's a lot of text. I don't believe there's any voice acting at all in the campaigns. There's a lot of text based dialogue, text based um, writing, but that's actually OK because the gameplay itself is is pretty cool. It's it's nice. Like I said, it's a nice proven RTS formula and it's just kind of enjoyable to see an indie RTS game um, like Cossacks 3. You know, it's it's just a little refreshing compared to, um, like I said, what we've seen in the markets nowadays. I mean, the strategy genre has been, um, you know, definitely centered on at least what I would say, like the Total War series. Uh, Sins of a Solar Empire. I mean, we just got like Ashes of the Singularity and Company of Heroes. Um, you know, they have content, they have stuff coming out. But uh, as far as this kind of RTS strategy game, something that harkens back to Age of Empires 2, Age of Empires 3, the original Caustics franchise, it is it is fresh as far as a campaign is concerned. That's just me, though. That's just me. That's what I think. Now, there are some, there are some problems with the game. Um, I would say the graphics... Depending on how you see graphics, I mean, some people actually might not like the fact that the graphics are not that groundbreaking. Um, I don't have a problem with how the graphics look. It looks nice. You know, the game isn't trying to lie to you and say that, oh, you know, it's breaking ground with its graphical fidelity. I think the game looks nice. Um, I don't have a problem with it. The battles are cool, especially when you have a lot of units. The buildings look nice. You know, the uh, the sprites and the effects, They while they are kind of on the cheap side, they're kind of, you know... Um, I'm not going to say low quality, but they're not just, um, you know, triple A quality. Um, it looks nice. I think for an indie game development group, they've done well um, with Caustics 3. It looks nice. It sounds nice. It's, you know, it's it's nice. But some people might find that uh, as a con. Some people might not like how the game looks. Um, now, it, this, this might be kind of a controversial topic or a controversial statement, but um, some, some people might think of Caustics 3 as not amazingly innovative i would have to say that i i would say that i don't think caustics 3 for all its pros and for everything that's good about the game i don't think caustics 3 breaks a lot of ground um like i said it's a remaster of caustics 1 which came out in 2001 you know and it had some expansions that came out in 2002 caustics 3 or caustics 2 um i think came out i think in 2004 around there and uh you know there's nothing amazingly groundbreaking about the gameplay itself, and I don't think it tries to market itself as such. I think some people who purchased Caustics 3 expected something like that. You know, I've had plenty of conversations with people in the community, and uh, I've actually kind of gotten some backlash from people who say, oh, you know, you don't know what you're talking about. You know, you never played the old Caustics franchise. It's amazingly innovative. No, nah, dude, come on. It's an RTS game, okay? Don't be, don't be blowing it out of proportion. I don't even think GSC Game World, the developers, wanted to blow it out of proportion either. Um, I, I think, you know, it's, it's a fun game. It's a proven RTS formula, but I'm not saying, um, and I don't want to give the impression that Caustics 3 is breaking a lot of ground. It's a fun game. It's a fun RTS game. It feels fresh. Although, is there anything amazingly innovative about this formula, about this game? I would say no. And some people might find that as a problem. Some people might see that as a good thing. I would say, um, maybe it's a little bit of a problem for me. Not much. I mean, I enjoy the game. I got it for free, for Christ's sake. <laughs> you know, I, I got a review copy, and um, I don't think it's it's too big of a hindrance that it's not being entirely groundbreaking. It's not coming up with some new formula for, you know, real-time strategy. I'm okay with that. Some other people might have a different opinion on it, but that's just me. I just wanted to throw that out there that that might be a con to some people. Um, other problems that I have with the game, there are some quality-of-life elements that are missing that other... I would say modern real-time strategy games do have um, occlusion behind buildings. When you have all units all over the place, especially hundreds of units, settlers, troops, infantry, cavalry, artillery, there's no occlusion. So if you move behind a tree, you actually don't know that unit is there until you select them. That can be kind of annoying. I actually never realized how much of a problem that was in an RTS game until Caustics 3. Having occlusion, being able to see all of your units... Um, you know, behind buildings, behind walls, behind mountains and stuff, that actually really is important. You'd actually be very surprised, especially because you can't rotate the campaign map. 
you can't rotate the map in caustics 3 on the engine you you're from a fixed perspective um you can zoom in and out but you can't rotate around left and right to see different angles of the battlefield and such uh occlusion is is kind of important actually in an rts game you'd be very surprised um i also do kind of wish that there was some sort of ledger slash overview mechanic so that you could view your faction and your military um in real time you know how many units you have or maybe some way on the minimap to find all of your units at, at some time or another um having to go and select every single individual unit um especially when you have a lot to manage when you have a lot of settlers and, and you're being attacked on different fronts and stuff like that having these huge villages having these huge battles um selecting troops can actually be kind of problematic if you don't have hotkeys if, if you don't have a quick way to find all of your soldiers um this one is also pretty interesting is when you drag a selection box um your selection box will select everybody not military units so that is also actually a pretty serious quality of life element that is missing from this game um you know when you're like i said when you're in the thick of battle and you need to select all of your military units not your settlers this could seriously like make or break an engagement and i found that that is uh pretty annoying is you know not being able to select military units only most strategy games have a feature that that says hey when you have a, a selection box please only select military units units who are meant to fight um that feature is missing in caustics 3 and i actually do think that it is kind of a problem <laughs> you know you'd be very surprised and it's i don't know it's it's little things like that that make or break a strategy game it's it's little quality of life improvements like that that you'd be very surprised they're actually pretty important because they're so common nowadays when they're missing you know that they're missing um it's they're just there's small cons like that that i think um make caustics 3 um a little less good than what it could be um i i would say that actually the game while it is obviously released in 2016 because of those quality of life improvements it's missing things it doesn't exactly feel modern and it's kind of a weird that's kind of a weird thing to say but i don't know it's just that's kind of how I can describe the game is, is because it's missing some things like that. It doesn't feel modern. It doesn't feel like it came out in 2016. It actually feels like it came out a while ago, you know, sometime probably before like 2010. <laughs> and, um, you know, that might be a problem for some people. And so I think you should keep that in mind. Let's see. Um, another probably this is the last con that I have about the game is some people might say that the the unit selection between countries is a little limited you know you only have uh maybe three or four types of infantry uh three or four types of cavalry artillery and uh, even then between countries they might actually appear quite similar usually pikemen musketeers um you know maybe a ranged cavalry unit archers now i understand that this game is based on a historical time period the 16th and 17th centuries or no i believe it's the 17th and 18th centuries so i'm not going to debuff it for that i'm not going to give it any flack but i think other people might so if you're thinking about buying this game you should probably keep that in mind um but other than that that's that's what i have to think about the game about cossacks i like it um i like to play it i don't think it's groundbreaking though i don't think um you're going to get addicted to it i don't think it's going to be that new thing that you were looking for to revitalize the uh, the strategy genre for you um i think it's a cool little game i think it's just a game that you'd like to play on like a lazy sunday or on a rainy day um some people you know especially in eastern europe and, and central europe i mean the uh the developers are ukrainian they might feel like this is a pretty serious game it's something to play competitively it's something to play with your friends and and have a serious sit down competition with that's not the way that i approach this game i think it's just a good well done rts game that's fun um if you if you like that kind of game if you don't want something that's too serious um i would suggest to get this game um i i think though if you're expecting something that's going to keep you hooked and, and you're you know expecting something that's going to be amazingly innovative and groundbreaking cost 6 3 is not going to be for you and so you shouldn't go into it with that mindset but anyway guys that's my thoughts on cost 6 3 um that's all that's about all i have to say actually yeah so i will see you guys in the next video thank you so much for watching this today and uh, please make sure to like subscribe and comment let me know what you think about the game if you like the game if you hate the game if you agree with some of my points or not please let me down uh let me know in the comments below and uh i will see you guys around